All right, guys, today is lesson 7-11, and we are going to be working on solving word problems that have fractions in them. So before we get started with our workbook, I'd like you to get out a blank piece of paper or your dry erase boards and um, get ready to start solving some problems on paper or whiteboard. Okay, so if you need to pause the video to grab your materials, go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, it says use your ruler and draw a line segment that is two and a half inches long. If you have a ruler, go ahead and grab that ruler and draw that. If not, remember we can just draw something and just pretend it's two and a half inches long. We can just kind of, it doesn't have to be perfectly to scale, okay? Um, and then it wants us to partition the line segment into half inch lengths. And it wants to know how many half inch lengths are there. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and just draw a line, okay? Whether it's two and a half inches or long or not, we're just going to pretend, okay? We're going to say there's zero and this is two and a half, okay? So we're just going to pretend, even if you don't have your ruler. All right, now we're going to partition the line segments into half inch line segments, okay? So now this is going to be a little tricky. Remember, this line segment is two and a half inches long. And so, you know what, maybe here's what I want to think about it. Let's, let's do it kind of like this. I'm going to go ahead and here's my zero. And I'm going to pretend that's one inch. Okay, so I didn't put that. I'm going to pretend that's another inch, that's two. And then I've got to go another half inch to get me to two and a half inches. Okay, so go ahead and draw something that looks like that. Now we're going to go ahead and partition it into half inch line segments. So you know between 0 and 1, you're going to have a half, right? And then between 1 and 2, what would be between 1 and 2? That would be 1 whole and a half. And then we have 2 inches and then 2 and a half. So this is segmented into half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, and half inch. Okay? So half, 1. One and a half, two, two and a half. How many half inch line segments are there? So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five half inch line segments. We're going to look at a word problem where doing something like this may come in handy. So let's look at, if I give you a problem and I say, Caitlin has some tube beads, okay? Tube beads are those, you know, those little beads like this that kind of have holes in each end so that you can string them. So Caitlin has some tube beads that are half inch long, okay? So each tube bead is half of an inch. When she lines them up, the bead, when she lines up the beads end to end, they are two and a half inches long all together. So here's her two beads, just kind of like on the picture that we drew. There's one that's a half inch, okay? Then there's another one. There's two, three, four, and five. So when she lines up the beads end to end, they are two and a half inches long. Um, how many two beads does she have? And so as we, if we were lining these up, when we got to two and a half, we would have had five beads. Okay. So she has five beads. All right, you see what we just did there? So she has two beads. Each of them are a half inch long. So let's say I didn't have this drawing already done. She has two beads that are half inch long. She starts lining them up. And when she gets to two and a half inches, she's going to see how many beads she has. So there's a half. There's another one that would be a half. So all together, that would be one, right? Then another two beads. That's a half. So that's one and a half, and another one would be, so now she's at two inches, and then another bead would be two and a half. So one, two, three, four, five beads. <clears throat> now let's look at what you have drawn so far. So if you didn't get that drawn on your paper, I want you to go ahead and I want you to draw a model of what her beads look like. So draw her five beads lining up on your number line to two and a half. Remember, you can always stop the video so that you can kind of get caught up. 
I want to know how many more beads does Caitlin need in order to make a bracelet that is six and a half inches long. So if we used what we already had drawn where we have our one, two, three, four, five, that gets us to two and a half inches, we want to continue that on out until we get to six and a half inches. Okay, so if I'm at two and a half, we can just kind of skip count by halves, right? So we've got two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, and six and a half. Let me make sure that I did that correctly. Let me go back. So I've got two and a half right there. So two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, and six and a half. Okay, so that takes me out to six and a half inches if I'm pretending that each of those are a half inch long. So I wanted to know how many more beads did she need to get to six and a half inches? So all we need to do is count how many went past that two and a half inches. So she needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more um, beads to get to six and a half inches. And so the next question says, what is the total number of half inch beads it will take to make a six and a half inch bracelet? Well, if it took five beads to get to two and a half, and it took eight more beads to get to six and a half, okay, then all together she needs 13, or she has a total of 13 beads. So this is an example of a word problem or something that you might need to do where fractions are going to come in handy. So let's look at page 246 in your workbook. I want you to go ahead and pause the video right now, and I want you to go ahead and try to solve the problems. I think there are two, three problems on this page. I want you to go ahead and try to solve these problems. Draw a picture to help you and then you can start the video back and we will go over them together. Okay, so hopefully you have already um, paused your video. All right, so if you have already solved the problems here on this page 246, let's go ahead and go over them together. Now hopefully guys, you drew some pictures to help you out. Remember, you can be drawing fraction circles, you can be drawing fraction strips, you can be drawing fraction number lines, um, whichever tool you like to use the best. This first problem is talking about football games. Guys, it doesn't matter whether you're drawing fraction circles that look like pizza or you're drawing you know, your, your um, rectangles, your fraction strips. It doesn't matter as long as you're dividing them up the way the problem is telling you to. So Tanya watched the whole football game, Michael watched one-fourth of the game, and Alma watched three-fourths of the game. Who watched the shortest amount of the game? I'm going to have to be careful because a lot of problems always ask who watched the most of the game. And this one says shortest. So I know Tanya watched the whole game, Michael watched one-fourth of the game, and Alma watched three-fourths. It wants to know what is the shortest. Guys, remember, circling your important information, underlining important information, looking for those keywords in there. So let's just draw what that could look like. I'm going to go ahead and, for this one, I'm going to draw a fraction strip. You may have drawn a fraction circle. You may have drawn um, uh, a number line, whichever you would prefer to do. Now, guys, I noticed that these fractions, both of these fractions are talking about fourths. So I can go ahead and divide this one into fourths. Remember, divide it in half first. Divide each half in half. Okay. Now, if it said, and we could draw one of these for, for each person, couldn't we, if we wanted to. We could draw one for um, Tanya. We could draw one for Alma. And we could draw one for Micah. Now, Tanya watched the whole game, so let's just draw a quick one for Tanya. This is Tanya, and she watched the whole game. Okay. So we know she watched the most, right? And now Micah watched one-fourth of the game. And if Alma watched three-fourths of the game, we can go ahead and divide hers into fourths. And she watched three-fourths of the game. Okay, so this would be Tanya, this would be Micah, and this would be Alma. 
Now it wants to know who watched the shortest amount of the game. And so right there, your sketches proved that one fourth is the least amount. Now hopefully at this point, guys, you're understanding that one fourth is less than three fourths. And of course, both of those fractions are less than a whole. But if you need to be drawing a sketch, this wanted you um, to draw out sketches to show your work. And so these fraction strips would be perfect where you could draw them out as fraction circles. All right, looking at the next problem, again, I hope you went ahead and figured this out first. If not, pause the video. The problem says Caden made two cups of salsa for the party. The six guests share the salsa equally. Write a fraction that shows how much each guest will get. All right, so I'm going to read that problem again. It says, Caden makes two cups of salsa. Guys, wouldn't that be like two holes, right? Our cups are going to be our holes. And so, um, you know, you, could, you can make something that look like cups, or you can just make your plain old fraction circles, okay? I'm going to go ahead and draw them as, and just pretend they're cups, okay? Just for the fun of it. It says the guests share the salsa equally. The six guests share the salsa equally. Write a fraction that shows how each, how much each guest gets. Now you can actually do this a couple different ways. Okay, we know that if we're taking these two cups and dividing it between six guests, um, some of you might go ahead and divide each cup into thirds, right? And so this could be guest one, guest two, guest three, guest four, guest five, and guest six. Okay, so write a fraction that shows how much each guest gets. Well, each guest is going to get um, one third of a cup of salsa. Now remember, your fraction is not one sixth, because remember, you're talking about what is your fraction of one whole. Okay, there are two whole cups here, okay? There's not just one whole cup, there are two whole cups. And you divided each of those cups into three pieces, so, or three parts, so that each guest could get one of those parts. So when you're telling me what fraction each guest gets, you're telling me what fraction of one whole does each guest get. Now, I could see some of you possibly, kind of trying to think like a third grader, I could see some of you maybe taking, let's do a fraction strip, and you divide this strip into, or, or a fraction circle. Let's say a fraction circle this time because I did strips on the last one. If I take a circle and maybe divide it into six pieces, okay? And so here's my one cup, here's my two cup, and I'm dividing each cup into six pieces. I can see some of you doing this so that guest one, two, three, four, five, and six, guest one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so each guest, like when you look at guest one, each guest is getting two, but getting two what? How is each whole divided? Each whole cup is divided this time into six parts. So each guest is getting two out of six parts. So I could see you dividing it into six parts as well and doing it this way. But one third is the same thing as two sixths. All right, moving on to problem three. <clears throat> and again, hopefully you have already solved this. If not, pause the video for a second. All right, it says one-sixth of the party guests were wildcat fans. The rest of the guests were night fans. What fraction of the guests were night fans? So we have two different fans here. We have wildcat fans and night fans. One-sixth of the fans were wildcats, and the rest were night fans. So if we're modeling this, if we're drawing a sketch of this, again, you could draw... Um, fraction circles, fraction strips, or a number line, whichever you like the best. Um, to be honest with you, I'm a big fraction circle person because I just can do it quickly. So if I take my fraction circle and I divide it into six pieces, then I'm going to divide it first into thirds, 
and then divide each third in half so that I have six here. And one sixth are wildcat fans. The rest of the guests are night fans. So one, two, three, four, five out of six are night fans. Okay. Remember, it doesn't matter if you're talking about fans, you're talking about people, you're talking about cups of salsa, you're talking about beads, you're talking about, um, what were we talking about in this one? Um, watching a football game. It doesn't matter what you're talking about. When you start talking fractions, fraction circles, fraction strips, and number lines can help you to model those no matter what the situation is. Okay? I told you, when I'm in my kitchen baking and I need to kind of figure out different fractions, I'm still drawing something that looks like a pizza, even though I'm measuring with cups, just because fraction circles are something quick and easy that I can draw out. All right, on page 247, guys, you're going to do fractions on a number line. Um, I think at this point, you really should be able to do this. I want you to, again, pause the video, do this page on your own. If you need some help, then go ahead and restart the video, and I'll go over it very quickly. All right, so the hole on a number line is the distance between 0 and 1. Each number line below shows more than one hole. You're going to label the holes then partition to locate and label the given fraction. So if I want to label the fraction 1 half, remember I'm dividing my holes into two parts. Okay? Oh yeah, this is kind of tricky. I kind of forgot about this one. Okay, so if I'm going to get clear down to four holes, I got to realize that this is probably one hole, two holes, three holes, and four holes. Okay, so there are my holes. Now I got to parti partition each hole in half. So I'm going to partition this hole in half, this hole in half, this hole in half, and this hole in half. And then go ahead and label <clears throat> one half on the number line. That's my one half. Okay. All right, looking at two fourths. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and label our holes on the number line. And so hopefully this didn't confuse you. All right, if this is two holes, then right here is one hole. Now, I'm going to divide each hole into four pieces, okay? So, if this is my hole from here to here, i got to divide that into four pieces. Remember, first we divide it in half, then we divide each half in half, and there I divided it into fourths. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of the number line. So, I'm going to divide this hole in half, and each half in half. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label my two fourths. So one fourth, two fourths would be right there. Which two fourths you should recognize is equal to one half. All right, write a fraction below each triangle to show the distance from zero. So this hole goes to three right here. But right here I notice three thirds. What do you know about three thirds? When the numerator and denominator are the same, that equals one whole. So we're going to look from zero to one and see how that's divided. And it's divided into thirds. So now I'm going to do um, one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, and seven thirds. Right there at that arrow. All right, this number line can have two holes down here. And I kind of, they kind of gave me a little hint. They divided it into eighths. So let's just go ahead and follow this out. So there's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. I like to go ahead and mark my holes there. Nine eighths and ten eighths. Let's go ahead and continue this out to make sure we're right. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen eighths. I knew it was in the right way there. 16 eighths. And of course, if you have 16 pieces that you ate and it's only cut into eight slices, that's going to equal two holes. All right, and it wants you to go ahead and label at least two more fractions on the number lines in problem three and four. And so you can go on up and just kind of fill in some more fractions up there on that number line. All right, guys, this one was a long video. I don't like to make them this long. So um, this is just kind of how it shook out. I will catch you next lesson.